Hey guys, my name is Z and you're watching Ye Mr. Easy. Hey, welcome to the GCSE DT or Design Technology Timbers video and playlist. And today for the first lesson, we'll be focusing on the core content for DT, which all DT like sub like sub subjects like DT like DT timbers, metals, textiles, and systems have to study. So for the first lesson, we'll be focusing on 1.1 specification, which is the impacts of new and emerging technologies and it will be a long video because I'll be covering all these uh, sub specification which includes 1.1.1 industry 1.1.2 enterprise 1.1.3 sustainability 1.1.4 which is people 1.1.5 which is culture 1.1.6 which is society 1.1.1.7 which is environment and 1.1.8 which is production techniques and systems. So check out the description for all the timestamps for the different sub-specification. So starting off with 1.1.1 industry, we'll be focusing on the unemployment, workforce skill set, demographic movement, and science and technology parks. So for, uh, for unemployment, we have the benefits and disadvantage of the industry. And for the benefits, we have costs have been cut by changing to more efficient manufacturing methods and products are being brought more quickly to the market as there are bigger transportation vehicles available to deliver stocks in like bulk and it reduces the transportation cost too. And a decrease in human error as machinery is programmed to perform its task. So less material will be wasted due to error which should increase the profits of the company. And from the disadvantage we have because of the advancement in technology, Machinery can be created which means less staff are required to perform these tasks and so low skilled jobs are made redundant. So the cost in the long run can be decreased but it can also mean unemployment for those workers and it's typically the low skilled workers which perform those mundane tasks every day. So for the workforce skill set we have with new and advancing technology, employers need to, to ensure their employees are trained and uh, trained and have to up-to-date skills to be able to keep up with the use of the new technology. And here's more the demographic movement. The movement of workers which can help labor shortage uh, be fulfilled but it can also be lead to like the loss of highly skilled people and in geography terms it's called brain drain. So here's more information. And for the science and technology parks, these are common places all around the world and they support businesses and research centers like universities and they encourage collaboration which can lead to a faster technology development which leads to a faster time for the product to be sold to the market. And for 1.1.2 Enterprise, we'll be focusing on privately owned business, crowdfunding, government funding for new business startups and not-for-profit organizations. And the impact for uh, impact on enterprise is that new ideas are continually emerging but it is difficult to ensure these ideas are developed successfully and as a result several ways have evolved to support the development of new products. And for privately owned business, many large companies started off as a privately owned business and the owner makes decision on the direction of the company and it is not accountable to anyone else and there are benefits including the ability to quickly adapt to the changes in the market but these companies often do not have the funding to invest in larger projects. So the opposite of privately owned business would be the public owned public business, like uh, when you like go, when your company go IPO onto a stock market, and uh, people can like the retail investor can purchase shares or stocks. And crowdfunding is where traditionally new businesses would borrow money from a bank to raise enough funds to develop a project, and this is risky and with interest payment can be expensive and they use websites to advertise products as investment opportunities where people can choose to like back a project with a financial donation if they think it will be viable. Backers are often rewarded with free gifts, discounts or pre-agreed part of any profits if the product is successful. And government funding is that new business can benefit a country's economy but may not have the full funding to start up. Government may financially support a new business if it is believed that it will be a benefit the, the economy. And in the UK, this government backing is known as startup loans. And the not-for-profit organizations. If the, if the owner of an organization doesn't cash in the profit for the from the business, but instead if you invest into the business, it is known as a not-for-profit organization. The profit is reinvested into the business to keep it running. 
and develop the business or invest in new and emerging technology. Then we have 1.1.3 sustainability. I'll just skip through, uh, skim through this. And it includes transportation costs, pollution, demand on natural resources and waste generated. So for transportation costs, the transportation costs involved in moving products out or assets from point A to point B. And the business will generally incur a transportation transportation cost if it needs to be uh, if, if it needs to bring its product to retailers in order to have them offered for sale to customer. Specifically, what transportation costs is that if you have to transport one item from one location to another location, it involves like transporting, which involves transportation costs. And pollution, there are many types of pollution: sound pollution, light pollution, and air pollution. And though this can all be sorted using the latest technology, new machineries are more energy efficient, which can dispose or reuse material better without harming the environment. So basically, um, the, uh, new technology like robots or AI are more energy efficient, and they can be more efficient in cutting materials or performing any task. And demand on natural resources, the demand for natural resources have been increasing since a lot, like a lot since the last 100 years. And report shows that at this rate, it will use up all the fossil fuels in just 40, 54 years, which have their origin somewhere between 541 million years ago. And we only started using fossil fuels 200 years ago, which is quite a short period of time, despite it taking millions of years to make. So we know that uh, fossil fuels are depleting in an, an alarming rate. So that's why we are pivoting into a renewable energy society. And for the waste generated, Materials are often wasted due to the manufacturing efficiency, which links back to the pollution. Because that materials are wasted during the manufacturing because of like human like um, there's like inefficient material use. Mater uh, AI or machineries are more energy efficient, and they generate less waste because they like they are efficient and know where to cut with like pinpoint uh, accuracy. Then we have one point one point four people. We have workforce, consumers, children people with disabilities, wage levels, highly skilled workforce, and apprenticeships. So workforce is where technology enables some people to choose how they work productively, like work from home, which we observed in 2020 during the pandemic. And this can have a negative effect on home life and lead to overworking. And consumer is where the advance, advancement of technology increases, and the consumers increase in demand as well as increased use of scarce resources. And for children, New and emerging technologies can offer the rich opportunities for education and entertainment, developing the children's academic and practical skills like Minecraft or game. However, there are concerns that children spend too much time using digital devices at the expense of social and physical activities. And people with disabilities, uh, these technologies cover small devices such as pencil grips to large lifting devices and all-terrain wheelchairs for people with disabilities. And new technology, technology in stem cell therapy can treat cerebral um, this condition, heart conditions, and visual problems. Then we have wage levels. Companies may need to pay more to attract staff with specialist technological skills, and learning new skills lead to higher wages. But as some previously high-paid jobs can become automated, associated with wages may fail. And highly skilled workforce. Demand is growing for high skilled and highly educated managers and professionals. And as we know, like people with hybrid skill sets such as technology and project management are likely to be in demand. And apprenticeship is where manufacturers often give training providers new uh, provided like new products for testing, encouraging apprentices to use them in their work. And apprentices, uh, apprentices and their tutors can log evidence and progress online. And new technology may create training opportunities for apprentices but no guarantee of employment for uh, like at the end of the training. And here's the culture. We have population movement with the EU and the social segregation or clustering within ethnic minorities. I'll like skim through this. Like migration plays a major role in the impact of new and emerging technologies because if people of a certain community chooses to live in area, the product that is designed specifically for them may not be as popular as or, or like or be easily sold anymore. And this could also change the price, uh, that it, and the price may differ between different communities. And the benefit for employing a migrant worker is that they provide the company's ideas with products that can also be targeted for people of their cultures 
or ethnic backgrounds as well as helping them to notice if there was something offensive that they shouldn't be selling. And social segregation. Some communities who are considered foreigners uh, in the country may feel the need to stick with the people of their own kind or like ethnic background, which then makes it difficult for them to access things like new technology as well as it being difficult to sell or market products that could be offensive in some cultures. And here's society. So we have the change in working hours and shift patterns and the internet of things. Remote working and use of video conference meeting, which is quite ironic because that's what we're doing now in 2020-2021. So for society, it's the, people, like, the idea of people living together in more or less ordered community. And in other words, it's the people that surround us and that we live among. And society determines what is needed by the collective group, which impacts our designs. So here's changes in working hours and shift patterns. During the Industrial Revolution, people were working up to 16 hours a day for 6 days with minimal pay. And since then, the conditions have improved to the point where people have 9 to 5 job and can work from home. And there are also day shifts and night shifts. And along with the advance in technology, it allows people to work on the go, from home or commute easier. And this affects work hour and shift times because work is more accessible. And the Internet of Things, or the IoT, is essentially uh, all the interconnected items that have access to the internet and all kinds of things from machines and all this stuff, street lamps, electricity meters through garage doors, all of these, are equipped with sensors and connected to the internet. The sensor data is sent to the cloud via radio or fixed network to be analyzed. The, network, uh, the knowledge gained in this way can be used to optimize processes reduce costs and time and maximize profits or implement new ideas and business models. Then we have remote working, which is what we're doing now. And with our development in technology, people don't have to commute to work to like, complete work. Many people, uh, many people with office, office jobs or similar can complete work from home without having to turn up to the physical workplace. And the advantage would be flexibility on hours. And if people are sick, they can still work because they don't have to travel and lower costs on commute to work and fewer distractions, which is a bit debatable. And disadvantage could be a break in routine and less workplace and therefore social interaction. It's a blur in the work-life balance. There's less IT support if you don't know anything about IT. And this could lead to a breach in information. And use of video conference meeting. With our technology, two people can hold an online meeting using websites such as Skype to share ideas and present to one another at lower cost or no cost at all. So advantage could be meetings and training can take place without, without the need to like be in the office. And travel costs and time taken can be reduced or eliminated. And meetings can be called at multiple locations with a short pre-hand notice. And it speeds up processes like decision making and problem solving. Disadvantage could be it may not be as productive. Confidential uh, document might lead to security breach, breach which have to be viewed in person. May have a high setup cost like all your laptops, your Wi-Fi's and your networks. Difficult to navigate across time zones and there's no social interaction. Then here's 1.1.7 environment which includes pollution, waste disposal, material separation, transportation of goods around the world and the packaging of goods. So for pollution, the impacts of pollution can be monitored and minimized by the usage of eliminating all outdated polluting technology, using software to ensure all growth is planned and environmental impacts are predicted, improving inefficient waste disposal methods, and improving extraction and conversion methods of all raw materials. And for waste disposal, businesses try to try and eliminate product waste by using new technologies such as using efficient manufacturing processes. Reusing waste within the same manufacturing process, recycling waste in a different manufacturing process, designing products so all components can be reused or recycled, which is quite important, and harnessing any waste energy such as heat and using it elsewhere. So like turn the turbine to or like to heat the steam water. And the material separation, if, if useful materials separated from waste to be reused and recycled, Less material will be used to be made and required and less material is sent to landfills. And automated machines separate materials by this type by, by the type, and individual materials are separated and reprocessed into the main materials with impurities removed. 
and transportation of goods around the world. Locally produced goods reduce the demand for overseas products with bad, which badly impacts the environment. And with new production techniques, it's easier to reduce the volume and packaging size, uh, packaging size of the product. And this enables more products to be delivered and produced. And for the packaging of goods, metal, glass, paper, and cardboard are like packaging. And as new technologies are developed and new materials are created, packaging has become more biodegradable. And companies now primarily use packaging that can be recycled, which is much better for the environment, like cardboard or paper. And then lastly, we have 1.1.8 production techniques and systems, which includes standardized design and components, JIT or just in time, bean manufacturing, batch, continuous, one off, and mass. So, for the standardized design and components, the same component or modular systems are used across many designs, usually, an individual part manufactured in large numbers to an internationally accepted standard. Advantage is that it's consistent, like safety and quality and it speeds up the product, uh, product development as parts already exist. But disadvantage is it could be it's difficult to customize and the quality of products may suffer. Just in time, while well, JIT is a, man a management strategy that aligns raw materials order from suppliers directly with production schedule, like car manufacturers. So basically what JIT is that if someone orders, uh, you, only, you only manufacture a product if someone orders, like just in time. An advantage could be it can increase efficiency and reduce waste, and it enables changes to the product production run to meet to demand. And disadvantage it could be any break in the supply chain holds up production, and it costs uh, of more frequent deliveries and fewer bought by discounts. And lean manufacturing is that reducing or elim eliminating waste in design, manufacturing, distribution, and customer service, like minimizing defects. Advantage could be multi-skilled teams are responsible are each responsible for a part of the production process, which can improve efficiency as workers share their skills and expertise. Disadvantage could be it requires time-consuming data analysis, and it requires disruptive changes to existing products. For batch, batch production is a method used to produce similar items in groups, stage by stage. In batch production, the product goes through each stage of the process together before moving on to the next stage let's say like electronic resistors. Advantage could be there's a lower capital cost, sorry, capital loss, and disadvantage is that downtime when reconfiguring the production system. And then we have continuous, which is the manufacturing of identical products in high demand 24 hours a day, like glass or Coca-Cola. And advantage could be it removes cost of stopping and starting the process, and materials can be cheaper in high quantities because you're ordering like bulk and disadvantage could be it has a high capital input and the thought in the production can stop the whole process and automation can lead to staff redundancy which can lead to like unemployment One-off is where a single unit product made by skilled workers like a yard or a wedding dress and advantage could be high quality products because it's only one-off so everyone is focusing on just that product Disadvantage could be production times are longer and the products are expensive as cost of material is higher and production is labor intensive which means that it requires loss of labor forces or like people and lastly there's mass production techniques or systems and it's a method of production that uses machinery to produce a product on a large scale and all are the same and are sold for a cheaper price like toy manufacturer advantage is that materials can be cheaper in higher quantities and disadvantage is that the initial setup costs can be high, the it's repetitive, and if a production line breaks, manufacture is halted. So that's it for the first lesson of design technology or DT Timbers, where today we covered the core content. And we'll be focusing more on the core content for the next few lessons. And today we have just covered the 1.1 new and emerging technologies. And there's more to come. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this and please leave a like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any comments or criticisms, which I will greatly appreciate it. Appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Until then, stay safe and happy learning.